there were three main development goals for the Necromancer. One, we wanted to ensure that it felt like it was faithful to both the lore and the player fantasy of what necromancy was in Elder Scrolls. Two, we wanted to ensure that the necromancer had unique mechanics. It couldn't just be a sorcerer with undead pets or a dragon knight with undead themed abilities. It had to stand on its own. And third, we wanted to make sure that the necromancer kept its identity. And by that we mean, regardless of build choice, if you were stamina or magicka, you always felt like you had necromantic things to do. We started with looking at what uh, necromancy was in Elder Scrolls lore across the board, making sure that we were kind of true to that concept, you know, manipulation of human souls, um, dealing with certain magics that aren't out there already with other classes. And also we wanted the world, the world to kind of react to you as a necromancer. So necromancy is kind of illegal, it's a little shunned in Tamriel. And so you casting Necromancer abilities would trigger illegal acts is something we really wanted to strive for. So Necromancers use a mixture of conjuration, illusion, and destruction magic. Our Necromancer wields a lot of different elements and a lot of different skill lines. So he's got like flame, frost, shock, poison, disease, physical, even magic. Unlike other classes that were kind of focused on one particular or two elements, the Necromancer wields all of them. We did split up the skill lines to also have a various theme in and of themselves. Some of them are dealing with like rendering flesh for the healer type line. For the damage line, you're dealing with uh, more direct physical attacks as well as uh, cold and other themes of uh, damage that we have out there. And then for the tank line, that one again, we went back to, you know, you're surrounding yourself with armor, with bones and dealing with uh, more physical aspects of necromancy. So some of the unique mechanics of Necros include being able to create your own pets, which then make their own corpses. And then you can tether yourself to that corpse, causing damage between you or causing healing between you and that corpse. Um, and also, you don't need to worry about just looking around for corpses trying to scavenge for them. You can make your own by either summoning up a pet and it lasts for a certain amount of time, or there's a skill called a uh, bone armor. And when the bone armor wears off, it'll drop down and then you can use that as well. That helps out really well with tanks because that's one of the tank abilities, bone armor. Uh, so we made sure that all play styles of either DPS healing or tanking can utilize and create corpses. Some of the lessons we learned from the other classes when building the Necromancer were to make sure we the class had a very defined set of strengths and weaknesses. We didn't want like the Swiss Army Knife class that could kind of handle everything he's got. Some things he's really good at. Um, and then some things he's not so good at. And we also kind of, some of the gameplay lessons we've looked at from all their skills is avoiding sort of heavy buff management um, and making abilities feel more active and more exciting. That button press is way more meaningful. Uh, so the Necromancer has three skill lines, just like all our other classes. Uh, the Grave Lord skill line, which is sort of their damage focus line. Uh, the Bone Tyrant skill line, which is their tanking line. And finally, their Living Death skill line, which is their healing focus line. And the Necromancer has uh, a skill line dedicated to each role. So the Grave Lord skill line is basically the DPS line. It has a couple cool abilities in there. One of them is pretty simple. It's just throwing skulls out of people. But every third cast of the skull that gets thrown, it's a bigger one. You can see that your character changes the animation. If actually, if you look at it in first person view, you do the, you do the devil horn, so it's pretty badass. And then the, the ultimate is actually there's a really cool story with that as we were kind of going through development uh, we didn't like the initial cut of the ultimate and the team started brainstorming what would be really really cool and how would it work and what we could really do to make this pop and we came up with the flesh colossus where this big bulky thing comes out of the ground and smashes its hand a couple of times on the ground and then explodes i think what'll be really cool to see out there with a necro in cyrodiil will be that moment when a wall comes down and people send in their skeletal pets at people on the other side of the wall, just seeing them run up and go over. That'll be pretty cool to see. Um, I'm also really excited to see a lot of the Justice gameplay with the Necro. I'm imagining a lot of people are going to get into trouble, quite a bit of trouble, with the bounty you're going to accrue casting Necromancer abilities in town. So another thing that I am definitely looking forward to with the Necromancer is just seeing how players react. This is a class that people have been asking for since beta. It is beloved by a lot of players, 
it is a huge part of Elder Scrolls lore in the Necromancer, and I can't wait for players to get in and start to play it and see just how awesome it is.